Hello, today I'm going to walk you through how to generate audio metadata for your audio files. This is a really important step in any machine learning process involving audio data. So let's get right into it. First thing you need to do is import pandas. Uh, PD. Okay. And now we need to import pathlib. Now this is just because I'm doing this in Windows and makes it a little easier. Otherwise I'd recommend just doing the app actual path. Import OS. So the first thing we need to do is declare our path to our audio files. So in our case, our audio files are on our desktop, audio data, and then in the folder WAV files, where we have two different classes of audio files named other sound with some number, and then scooter sound with some number, dot wave. So let's go ahead and make a path to our audio files dot path dot home and then we're going to navigate again to that spot so desktop whew, desktop audio data and then our folder wave files so this is of course going to be uh, generated into a uh, a data frame data frame which will then go into a CSV and uh, we're going to have uh, four different columns. So we're going to have the uh, label. Actually, we'll have the file name. We'll have the uh, sample rate. We'll have the uh, duration of the audio file, or the length of it. And we'll also have the label, or the type of uh, audio file it is. So again, in our case, we have scooter and other. So you could, of course, have something more like cat, dog, person, car, uh, car, etc. You have a whole bunch. So that's irrelevant. Um, so what we're going to want to do here now is we're going to want to make a function which can get all of our file names in a directory. So we'll just say def get file uh, files, we'll just do files in dir, and we'll pass it a argument of directory. And what we'll do now is we'll just make an array files and we'll say files equals oas.lister directory that we pass it again. And then we just want to return that um, array of files. Great. So now we need to go ahead and declare an array. We'll say file names. And we'll run this function here um, get file names, get files in dir directory. All right. Uh, not directory. Our directory is a course wave files. So that'll get all of our uh, all of our file names in our folder wave files. And it's important that I note that all of our files are in the same directory. They aren't in subdirectories. So something you're going to do now is uh, count how many instances, unless you already know how many instances of each class of file you have. So in our case, again, we have two different um, two different labels. So we have scooter and other. So let's call this a scooter, scooter counter. And then we'll, of course, have a uh, other counter. And what we need to do is to count how many instances, again, we have of each. So what we're going to do is make a function, actually, that does this. So we'll just say def uh, count inst. And we'll, tape, we'll just pass this. I, um, a keyword. So, and of course, our array. So, here we will just do, um, um, we'll just say s, s equals sum, and then a keyword in s for s in uh, our array. And then we will just return s. And that should return our uh, our sum of uh, how many instances of that keyword we have. So now we can just say uh, count inst. And we'll say our keyword for the scooter is, of course, scooter. And we're passing in that file's names. And then, of course, we'll do count inst again keyword here is other and then we will pass in the same array of files 
So that will count all of our instances of files that we have nicely. And so we can go ahead and check that real quick. So we'll say scooter counter. I know that there is 67 of these. So if I run this, we should see a print of 67. Oh, could not find. Oh, I misspelled my directory there. So let's run it again. 67. So it works. So now we can move on to actually making our different columns in for our Excel file. So we need. We know again that we need our. Uh, in this case, we're going to do our file name, sample rate, length, and label, right? So we'll say our sample rate is equal to, again, in my situation, every sample rate is the same. And we'll multiply this times the length of all files. So this will create a column for, uh, eventually, our column in our Excel file of length all of our files, which is very nice. So if let's say, for instance, you don't know what your sample rate is. There's a really easy way to get that. So we'll just write uh, a quick function here for getting sample rate. So you need to import Librosa. And we'll just say sam get sample rate. And we'll pass in a file in this situation. So you'll want to do Librosa.load our file and return SR. So in this situation, you will um, pass in a file name, and you will get the sample rate of each file, uh, one file at a time here. Uh, this is just a simple uh, uh, example. You can easily instantiate this and do whatever you need to do, uh, have it in the loop. And yeah, that's how you can easily get your sample rate. So other than your sample rate, you also need uh, a label for, in our case, a scooter. And we will call that simply scooter, and we will multiply that times scooter counter, and then we of course need our other, other, uh, our label other, which is just other, and we will multiply that by other counter. Like, you know, uh, yeah, let's do counter. Keep it a little organized, and then we need the length of our audio file. So in our situation, it is one. There's also a really easy way to get that. And that's file names, and that's it. So we have all of our different columns that we're planning on working with in this situation. So if we quickly make our our data frame using pandas, um, so our first column we will call it just file name. Let's make it all one, and we'll of course pass in file names. Uh, real quick for our labels, we'll just name another variable here label which is equal to uh, our label scooter plus label other. So we're just combining all of our labels into one array or a list of label. So next thing we're going to do is our sample rate. We'll just call it SR, make it simple. And we'll pass in our list of sample rate. And then, of course, we have our label, which is just our list of label. I'm on autofill. And then finally, we have our length or our duration of each audio file, which I have just uh, called length here. Length. <laughs> and then I'll pass in length. Oh, man. Length. OK. So that's everything there. Now let's go ahead and take a peek at our data frame. OK. So we have a total of. 27,822 files and four columns. So if we take a look, we have our index column, 0 through 27,821, our file name column, our sample rate, our, our label, and then, of course, our length or duration of the audio file. So let's say, for instance, you don't want this index column. Uh, I don't know why, because the index column is very handy uh, in nearly every aspect. But we can go ahead and change it. Let's say, for example, you want to change your index column to file name. So let's go ahead and type in file name here. And then we'll say in place equals true. And if we run this again, uh, printing our data frame. OK, so now we can see that we've removed that index column. We have one less column overall. And the first column will now be our file name. So let's go ahead and save this to a file. 
So we'll say df dot to CSV, and then we will put our path. So in this case, it's uh, desktop audio data, and then finally, we'll just call this uh, metadata.csv, and then we will say index equals true. So we'll go ahead and run this, and that's good. So now we can see our file has generated successfully, and we have our file name, our sample rate, our label, and our length. So let's go ahead and uh, add that index column back real quick. So we'll just simply comment this out. And if we run it again, good to go. Our new file is generated. And now we can see we have that index column. And that's pretty much all there is to do here. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good day.